Alrighty, so today I'm going to teach you guys about protons, neutrons, and electrons, right? And these are the three types of subatomic particles that make up um, atoms, I'm told most according to this guy named Democritus, right? So atoms, again, are made up of protons. Protons are positively charged subatomic particles. And they are found inside of something called the nucleus. So you've got protons, so I usually symbolize them P positive. Also inside the nucleus, you have neutrons, right? I call them N0. Why neutron? Zero, because they are neutrally charged, or they don't have one. Now, these are the heaviest two things. So because of that, when we talk about the mass of an atom, what we say is the protons and neutrons, they pretty much make up the entire mass. Why is that? Because the electrons that are negatively charged and found outside of the nucleus are so light that uh, we really just pretty much neglect them. We pretty much act like they're not even there. So when we think about the mass of an atom, we're talking pretty much about the protons and the neutrons. Now, in our uh, in your packets and things like that, you are going to be asked to do some calculating, okay? You know, how many protons, how many neutrons, how many electrons do something have? Well, you know, we're, I'm going to give you an element, and that element is carbon-12. Well, there's three ways you can write it. You can write carbon-12. In this type of notation, what they end up giving to you is something called the mass number right here. And that mass number indeed is 12. But there's two other ways I can write this. I can write this like you see it on the periodic table. You see a C, you see a 6 above it, and you see 12.01 beneath it. Now, what does that mean? It means this is the atomic number And this is something called the atomic weight or the atomic mass. I like to use mass better because we're standing on the earth, and so the mass and weight are the same, but they're not technically the same thing, right? Gravity determines it. So I like using that, but you'll usually say atomic weight. And then the third way we can write is we can do this. We can do the symbol, and we can do 12 over 6. Now, this one takes these two things and combines them. Okay, so what you end up getting is something called the mass number. And this thing is called the atomic number. Now, there's one other thing that comes from this atomic mass, and it is the percent abundance. You see, there are more than one type of, uh, of carbon out in the world. The two that come to mind mostly for me are carbons 12 and carbon 14. Now, carbon 14 is used for radioactive decay and dating. Basically, like when they want to know how old like a fossil is, they can expose it to carbon 14, look at the half-life, look at how quickly it breaks down, it gives them an idea of how old something might be. So, percent abundance. Now, percent abundance says this. It takes into account all the 12 versions. So, like, you know, carbon 12. You're going to find 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12. And what this means is, you know, you're going to find a whole lot more 12s than you find a 14. You might find one 14 for every, you know, 200 version 12s. That's because that, that's why that number is closer to 12 than it is to 14. So, let me explain that in another way. Okay, percent abundance. Let's say I had a test, you know. You got 100% on a test, you got 100% on the next one, you got 100% on the next one, and then you get a 90%. Right? Well, if I asked you if your grade was closer to 90 or 100, you would say, well, I've had three of these, I've only had one of these, so my grade is going to be closer to 100% than it is to 90. Same thing here, right? If you get a 12, a carbon 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 12, you get my point. Then you get 114, then you get a 12, you get a 12. Well, that number is going to be a lot closer to 12 than it is to 14, and that's what happens here. Okay? That's why it's 12.01. That's why you see that, and yet in the other two versions, they're whole numbers, right? So what does that mean? It means this. So when you are calculating the number of protons, 
Oh, I meant to write of. So number of P positive protons, which are located inside the nucleus. This is exactly equal to the atomic number. What does that mean? It means it's this number right here, the 6 and the 6. Now you might be saying to yourself, uh-oh, well on this one, Mr. Gerby, you don't give me the uh, atomic number, and I don't. This is called hyphen notation because that's a hyphen. So on this one, what you'd have to do is you'd have to go find on the periodic table the square, a rectangle that has this stuff in it, and pull it out, and you'd write underneath of it atomic number of 6. So for the number of protons for carbon, right, atomic number is 6. Atomic number is 6, atomic number is 6. Therefore, the number of protons, there are 6 protons. Likewise, electrons. There's no charge on any of these. You don't see like plus one or minus one or anything. You know, like it doesn't say, you know, plus and it would be plus or minus four if it was an ion. But it's not, right? We don't have those pluses and minuses there. So as such, this is electrically neutral. What does that mean? It means the positive charges and the negative charges cancel. So therefore, the number of electrons is also, for now, equal to the atomic number. Now eventually we'll talk about something called an ion. And an ion is where you end up with something like chlorine with a negative one charge. Then these two numbers will be, won't be the same. But for now, we're not doing that. We're just doing elements. So as such, six electrons. Right now, there's no charge. As such, the two things cancel. Neutrons is the hardest one. The number of neutrons is equal to the mass number minus the atomic number. Well, that's pretty easy on this one. I told you the mass number is 12, 6. 12 minus 6 is 6. So you end up with 6 neutrons. But let's say I gave it to you like this, right? I didn't give you the other ones. What I would tell you is this. Round it to the nearest whole number. We haven't told you otherwise, because that's the most abundant version. It's version 12. Then go 12 minus 6 to get 6. So again, we give it to you like this. Round to whatever the nearest whole number is. Subtract the atomic number, and that's what you'll get. Okay? Um, likewise, 12 minus 6 is 6. Let me give you another one. Sodium. Let me give it to you in hyphen notation. Sodium 23. So the first thing you need to do is you go to the periodic table and you look at the atomic number for sodium, and it's 11. Right? So you go find, you know, on the periodic table where it says Na, it says 22.99 and 11 above it. Now, the 22.99, I told you, round it to the nearest number, I thought it got to be 23. 11. And 11. So, number of protons. Again, the number of protons is equal to the atomic number. The atomic number is always found on the periodic table above it here, so there are 11 protons. Now, you don't see a charge here, right? It doesn't say, you know, this would be plus one if it was charged, but it's not. It's not an ion right now, it's just sodium by itself as an element. As such, it also has 11 electrons. Now, number of neutrons. Number of neutrons is equal to the mass number minus the atomic number. So, you take 23, subtract 11, and you get 12 neutrons. They say it's 11 protons, 11 electrons, 12 neutrons. And that's how you calculate subatomic particle number.